It's our time. We must rise up and no longer disparage. It's our time, church, to honor our heritage. We have a savior. He gave it all on the cross. We stand beside martyrs who counted nothing as loss. They took God's mysteries, opened them up for us. Stephen, John the Baptist, Bonhoeffer, Jan Hus. Surrounded by a cloud of witnesses above, it's now our turn to model his unending love. Our mission is one we cannot confuse, nor muddy up with some trite excuse. You say you're not well-versed, ready, or able. I think Moses even tried to use that fable. The time we have, it's now more urgent. If we should hear, well done, faithful servant. Yeah, church, it's our time. It's our time to confess the ways we're mangled, the sins and selfishness that have us entangled. Lust, greed, and pride, their path leads to the grave. Yet we return to our sins as if we're a slave. Can we survive in this putrid dead sea? I quote Paul, may it never be. So let's cast aside our individual leprosy and begin to leave a biblical legacy. There's a glorious prize awaiting to be won, and the way to win is to start to run. Let's lace them up and fight the good fight, become to the world both salt and light. Our life on earth is merely a vapor. Our chapter must move from pen to paper. So church, let's get to writing because it's our time. It's our time, church. We have what it takes to help the world from its slumber awake. To Jesus, we are his beautiful bride. Whom shall we fear with him on our side? We have each other. We are not alone. It's iron to iron in the combat zone. There's a promise of life full of adventure. As long as we give both talents and treasure, the workers are few, the harvest is plenty, with so many lives running on empty. Scores of people trying to cope. They've come to the end of their proverbial rope. Young eyes are wandering, looking for direction. Make sure we point them to his resurrection. The clock's ticking. We're on our dime. Hey, church, rise up. It's our time. Good morning, church. Oh, it is so good to see all of you this morning, and welcome to those online. I am Pastor Erica Gravely, and welcome to Asbury United Methodist Church. Today, is the, we're celebrating the birthday of the church. Happy birthday as we celebrate Pentecost and the blessing of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So um, a special welcome to those who are visiting for the first time this morning. We're glad you're here and celebrating in worship today. I hope you're able to feel God's presence as you come into worship today. And for those, those of you online, uh, let us know you're here. Uh, you can share in the chat section uh, who's worshiping with us. Those in person, uh, those green slips of paper, you can fill them out and put them in the plexiglass box just outside the, outside the doorway here. Uh, we're still doing a, a touchless worship service of sorts, so no passing of plates or anything like that. Uh, so if you could uh, put that all in the plexiglass box on the way out. That would be great. And uh, if you have any prayer requests online, you can post them in the chat section or go to our website. And uh, there's a prayer wall there that you can share your prayers there. And our prayer team will lift you up during the week. And those in person, you can fill out a car and card and put it in that box as well. So welcome. Welcome to worship this morning as we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming into our lives, especially in a time where we have been sitting still, sitting still and waiting for quite some time. So let me share with you these words of Pentecost. While staying with the disciples, Jesus ordered them not to leave Jerusalem but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit 
not many days from now. When the day of Pentecost had come, after Jesus had ascended, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Let us pray. Spirit God, move, swirl, and dance among us. Remind us that you are always present encouraging, freeing, and inspiring us to be the loving people you created us to be. Stir us during this hour to hear your voice, receive your blessing, and speak your life into the world. It is our time. Amen. Please stand if you are able for our first song, Spirit of the living God. Can the graduates please come up? Here, I'm going to have you two stand right here. Now, Jonathan, you were here just a couple weeks ago, and we sell the homeschool group celebrated the uh, graduation here. So good to see you up here again. Liz, thanks for being here. So our graduates. They have been in our lives, and we have helped them on the journey uh, to help them come to this point. And it's amazing that this is coinciding with uh, Pentecost Sunday and just celebrating the Spirit, kind of how it's guided you through your life and how it's, it's taking you off again. 
Um, so uh, I want to share a little bit about each of the graduates that we're celebrating uh, that are uh, from our community. So we have Melanie McMullen. She's the granddaughter of Chuck and Mary Avey. She graduated from the University of Missouri-Columbia School of Law on May 16th. She will be taking the bar exam in July and joining a civil law firm in Springfield, Missouri. Cameron Cox, the grandson of Larry and Ginny Oliver, graduated from Fordland High School last yesterday. Oh, today. It is today. You are right. And so uh, celebrating him as well. And then we have Liz Cullum, uh, daughter of Steve and Dana Cullum. Graduated from Stevens College in November of 2020 with a master's in physician assistant studies. After passing national boards, Liz accepted a job with Mercy at Smith Glen Calloway Clinic in family medicine and began working there in February. <laughs> And then, you know, I just realized the people online are not seeing you. All right, people online, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> we'll, work, we'll work it out. Uh, but you have pictures, so it's good, it's good. Jonathan has been homeschooled his whole life and attended Play and Sing His Praises for the past 10 years. He will continue on at OTC as he earns his associate's degree in agriculture with an emphasis in farm animals. Friends, he cares for around 20 different living creatures in his home right now. So this, this, is, this is where he needs to go. So he hopes to continue working at Dickerson Park Zoo at this um, as this his is lifelong passion, definitely agreed. So we want to bless you in, the, in, in where you're taking off to. This congregation, like I said, has, has cared for you so much, watched you grow and uh, grow into the people you are today. So we would like to share this blessing with you. It's a call and response. So congregation, watch, watch the screen as we share this blessing for you. So we take this moment in the blessing of the Holy Spirit to celebrate the accomplishments of the graduates in our community. One part of your life's journey is complete. You will prepare to begin another phase that, you will, that will take you to unimaginable places. As you prepare for your next journey, we hope that you remember the ones who have loved and supported you throughout the years. Use those memories as a beacon to guide you on your path forward that Jesus points out that one can't plow straight a straight path while looking constantly back. Do not dwell on what once was, but use those memories to create a new path. Because we are made in the image of God, we have been blessed with a free will to make choices and decisions.
congratulations. <laughs> Scripture continues in Acts 2, verses 5 and 6, and 12 through 18. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. And all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading and hearing of his word. Thank you, Ruth. So the faithful followers were gathered for Pentecost. Now, Pentecost is the Jewish celebration of the first harvest of wheat, and Pentecost mean, meaning 50 days. So it was 50 days after Passover that they gather again together in Jerusalem. So they were all gathered there. And um, it had, 10 days had passed uh, since Jesus ascended into heaven. Uh, and they were stand, well, they were, they were waiting in this room, waiting what, for what to do next. Because the disciples had received their th three years of training with their rabbi. Yeah, graduates, only three years. <laughs> only three years for them. They walked alongside the Son of God and witnessed his works. Some things definitely did not make sense to them, but they stuck with it because this man was handing out life and hope and love like it was free. They had the knowledge and the experience within them, though. And Jesus came back and proved life beyond the grave. The relief from all suffering and a God who loved unconditionally. And then he ascended into heaven and left his followers behind again. And now they were hanging out, waiting for the thing that would get them going. Kind of like many vehicles in the southeastern part of the United States recently, when the colonial pipeline was hit by a cyber attack by hackers on May 7th, and the distribution of gasoline in that area was disrupted for five days. In Georgia, North Carolina, and Virginia, over half the gas stations ran out of gas. Cars were hanging out in long lines, and the intricate web of commerce was at a standstill. And I think we've all noticed at the gas pumps this week that of the widespread uh, damage from what has been done. The gas is gone, not moving. Have we felt like that? Do you feel like that now? There's this potential 
There's something within you. You have this ability, but nothing's happening with it. So Rashonda felt like she was not getting the fuel through the work that she was doing in molecular genetics. She had the talent to work in the field. It was something that she was good at, but she kept on coming up short. The gas pumps were empty. We're one minute out. Video first, thank you. My first degree was in biology, so I worked in molecular genetics for six or seven years. But what I found is that me working in the lab behind the scenes, I was not utilizing my talent or my passion as far as touching people. And I came to understanding more about dietitians and what dietitians do, and I felt like this would be a career that I can see myself in to really push healthy living. Uh, healthy eating in my own creative way and make it fun to where people actually look at healthy food and smile. <laughs> in the Bible, God said our body is our vessel, we should honor it. And how can we, if we're not giving our body what it needs to thrive, to live, to do what we're supposed to do, our work, then how are we actually honoring it? Better vessel, we should better our life, better our health, by better in our body and nutrition is the vehicle and I think I, my goal is to change people's perspective on why they choose to eat healthy not just because someone told them to do it or this is the right formula but because they truly believe they want to honor themselves by putting in the right foods to help increase their health to help increase their ability to be who they want to be for themselves and for God. I am a single mom as my son's father passed away when he was a baby so at the age of 23, I have a child, and my husband, my fiance slash father, my son, is not here on this earth. When he passed away, I didn't have a feeling of fear. I didn't have a feeling of instability. Actually, it's weird, but God gave me a feeling of peace. And I felt, it's, I will never forget when he passed, the day he passed away, it may sound like a movie, but I looked in the sky and I just felt the feeling of peace. And I just knew that God was going to take care of me. All right, everybody. So if it doesn't last that long, chances are it's good for you, right? Everybody, bettervesselnutrition.com if you guys want to learn more. And remember, time flies when you're having clean food here on the 9 a.m. show. He has given me no fear. <laughs> oh, man. There's no fear. Two most poignant parts of your life. The moment you were born, right? And the moment you know you were born to do. And when you know what you're, what you're born to do, nothing can change that. You feel confident and thriving in it. You're not shifted, oh, if it's going to work, if it's not. You know you're living in your passion, you're living in your talent. And I feel like that's a connection that God has given you. And I think that once you know what you're supposed to do, you have a clear vision of like where it's going to take you. You know? My name is Rashonda Thornton, and I go to the gathering in St. Louis. Oh, I experienced her in person, and she is just a ball of energy. She is definitely falling into what God has called her to do, and she is just exuding life and energy. And so, yes, she had this talent in biology. She was, she was good at it, but she wasn't really using her gift. And so what, what did she say her gift was? It was touching people. It was being with people. And so she decided to create Better Vessel, so kind of joining her, her talents, her interests, with her gift to help people be better for themselves, to be, uh, honor themselves as a good vessel for God, and to honor themselves and also God in doing that. So once she started out in this, how did she feel? What did she say? She said,
said, there was no fear. No fear. I love the way that she said that. That was like her, her battle cry. There was no fear. She felt confident and she was thriving in it. Even though her fiance had passed away at the time, God just gave her, what did she say? A sense of peace, that it was gonna be okay as long as she was falling into what God's will was for her, that she could do this and she could do it well. And I've experienced it, she does it well. And so she was living in her passion as well which connected with the world's needs. So she saw the need out there of uh, people living unhealthy lifestyles and how she could affect people, connect people, help them change, help them live better, help them honor themselves and God better by taking this on. And it was interesting, she also said, she didn't feel, when she was on that path, she didn't feel like she was shifting. Is, is this going to work or not? I'm not sure. And she kept on striving ahead. And she said, if you have a clear vision, you, you know, if you are living into your gifts, you will have a clear vision of where it's going to take you. Powerful. I love her story. So we see at Pentecost, when the blessing of the Holy Spirit descends upon all the people who are gathered, people are suddenly given the fuel to do things that were not humanly possible. And Peter says, in a way, look, here's the fuel. It's been promised to us. Remember when the prophet Joel told God's, pe what God's, pe Joel told God's people long ago, God will give you the fuel and will fuel you by the Spirit and give you the ability to see things and speak things that do not come from you, but from something far greater than just you. To who is this Holy Spirit coming to? Young and old, men and women, free and slave, and all can be used for God's message of love and hope. All. So what does this fuel do? Well, unfortunately, it doesn't help us win games on the field or get promotions or buy a new house. See, those are the talents that we have, the things that we're good at, the skills that we have. And those are helpful, but this is a little bit different. See, God takes what you have, this gift that you have, and use that to bless others, to share the love of God, to bring Jesus to others. That's what this special gift is about. It frees us to carry out God's will and ministry of pointing others to Jesus. As believers of Jesus, the work that we are called to do can seem difficult. It can seem impossible. Me stepping up in this role had no idea, no way. Speak in front of others, do that, crazy, crazy. If you would have talked to my teenage self, this would not even come across as an option. But Jesus looked at them looks at us and says when he was among his disciples, for mortals, it is impossible. But for God, all things, all things are possible. In fact, Dana back there in the booth, she, uh, her husband Steve was running the AV and um, he had to go in for uh, a job at the hospital and so she's picking up where he left off and God's working through you, Dana. This is not her, her first, her forte with things, but God is working through you to get the images up on the screen and to help worship run well. It empowers us to do strange and crazy things, just like we see at the day of Pentecost. Crazy things. 
So we all have our unique ways of the Holy Spirit working through us. Rashonda realized that her unique gift was not being used in her work conditions in the lab. For some of us, like Steve, who just ran to the lab, it is, but for her, it was not. Her gift was speaking with people, showing them how valuable they are as vessels created by God. They gave life not, she, she and those with their gifts give life not only to others, but also it gives life to themselves. It's a gift that gives both ways, that enlivens both the giver and the receiver. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. As a follower of Christ, baptized by the Holy Spirit, being, we are being born again to something new, and we are given these gifts. And she talks about that, those two births. And so we have these gifts as being baptized, as being one with Christ. We have these abilities. So what, what are your gifts? Do you know? Have you figured it out during your lifetime? You may feel that there's one certain thing that you feel the Holy Spirit is working through, but there may be others. Uh, with, with Janice Green, she, she took the assessment, and yes, she knew, yes, she's, she's a teacher. She's using that gift extremely well right now, uh, as some of you in the class would, could probably attest to. But it just, it also affirmed what her gifts were. But there's other areas too. It's not just uh, you, you take this 15-minute uh, survey and it says, okay, there it is, boop, right there. Um, there's other areas as well. So maybe you can uh, live, try living into those areas that um, it, it suggests for you. So if you go to the website, www.umcdiscipleship.org slash spiritual dash gifts dash inventory. It's not on your bulletin, but we emailed that out um, with the worship bulletin um, yesterday, and we'll also put it on the Facebook page. So I hope you get some time after worship during the week to uh, just fill it out first, first thoughts, first instincts when you answer those questions. And um, I hope it is a blessing for you that uh, you can discover something new about yourself or as we are opening up again and kind of rediscovering the things that you can do, that those gifts are the easiest, the easiest to do for you. So I hope you, I hope you check that out. So this moment, this, this, it's our time. This is the moment to find out what you were born to do. Once you know, as Rashonda said, you have a clear vision of what you have to do. We are sitting in our cars, seeing clearly a vision that is for, before us, and we are ready to go. The Holy Spirit fuels you to drive into that vision. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we respond in prayer. And uh, as we prepare our, our hearts and minds and just settle in to God in this moment, uh, Teresa will, will play for us.
Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us with your love. Open our eyes to see the presence of God all around us, in the stillness of this sacred space, in the busyness and noise that is creeping into our city streets, in the joys and celebrations of our lives, in the tragedies and struggles that break our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and comfort those who grieve. Grant them the peace that only you can bring. Stir within us a trust in life beyond death as we ponder the mysteries of Christ's resurrection and the hope we have in new and everlasting life. Come, Holy Spirit, and bring wholeness to the sick. Strengthen those for our weak. Heal the wounded and the broken. Give rest to the weary. Come, Holy Spirit, and inspire our roaring world to seek peace, to love our enemies, to put away our weapons, to remember the price paid for our freedom, to care for those who have served. Come, Holy Spirit, and empower our graduates and those who have completed the difficult task in order to take the next step. Empower them to step up and step out well, to live into what they were born to do. Bless them with confidence and no fear. Help them to thrive. Come, Holy Spirit, and revive your church. You have been working in us and stirring in us for a long time. Free us from the bonds of fear and doubt complacency and apathy. Inspire us with Christ's vision for a world reborn. Help us to recognize our gifts for ministry, to fall into them with ease and to use them in service for others. Transform our hearts and our minds. Be the fuel that pours into us and sets us in motion. Remind us that there is no greater calling than to love you with all that we are and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Gracious God, give us a glimpse of your kingdom emerging around us and drawing us into the new things that you are doing in the world. It is in your kingdom that we now pray, filled with your spirit, using the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, with the blessing of these gifts that we have and the blessing of the Holy Spirit, we give back. And this is just a sample of, of what has come in through the mail from our tithes and offerings, but several other ways that people have given this week. Uh, if you notice the pews that you're sitting in, uh, there's a team that did a really good job last Thursday. So we thank you for those who stepped up and uh, making the pews and all the, the woodwork around here shine. Uh, as Regan pointed out, whew, there's some, there's some dusty places alongside here. So thanks for helping out with that. And uh, also yesterday we had um, a vaccination clinic in the fellowship hall and we were able to vaccinate 26 people and uh, the helpers there it was great a lot of them coming out of retirement and just picking up their their talents that they were used to and just using their gifts and welcoming well and uh, just creating a hot um, a hospitable atmosphere for people to come in and get their vaccination so uh, that we can uh, get people uh, back together again and using their gifts to do that. 
And then also, uh, thank you for those who have purchased geraniums uh, in honor of and in memory of loved ones. There's a list of those uh, people that they have honored in your bulletin as well. And of course, Mark did a great job uh, putting the geraniums up. Unfortunately, it's been raining for 40 days and 40 nights, and so the, the geraniums didn't get a chance to bloom yet. Uh, some have, some fought really hard and came through. Uh, so for those who have uh, ordered geraniums, uh, put them out in the sunshine today and I'm told that they will bloom forth quite happily uh, when they get that sunshine. So thank you for your gifts as the proceeds from that uh, go to the Pastor's Help Fund. Sorry? Oh yes, yes, uh, well, I was going to explain that later, but yeah, don't, don't take the baskets, they're, they're Mark's, he wants them back, so um, thank you. Uh, <laughs> please stand if you are able uh, for the doxology. I forgot to also mention that at our uh, prayer walk yesterday at Jarrett Middle School around the hallways, we had 18 people there, which was a great turnout, and the principal was so happy that we got to fill the hallways with prayer and gratitude uh, for a, a great school year despite the circumstances. So thank you to all who participated with that as well. And please remain standing for our closing song, How Great is Our God. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice How great is our God Sing with me How great is our God All will see how great
God, sing with me how great is our God. All will see how great, how great is our God. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great. Two songs, one that some may know and the others that don't, but they come together, praising God, how great God is. So friends, as we move out into this world, I just want to tell you a few ways that you can use those gifts and work on those gifts. Uh, our Bible study led by Janice Green, they are starting up a new book called Romans in the Grip of Grace by Max Lucado. There's a description of that in your bulletins. Um, and if you want to order a book for that, let the office know by June 3rd. And then uh, we are working on coming back together. It's so good to see some faces I have not seen in person for a while. Uh, and we're working on getting back together safely. So uh, we have our, we're starting to do our Sunday school hour between worship services, and you're welcome to come back together for that. For middle school and on up, uh, children will be starting the first week of June, June 6th. So um, and we're also working on with the, or the city ordinance uh, being um, uh, put down as of May 28th. And we're trying to discern how we're going to open safely, open well. I know we all want to get back to what we had done before. So please, please hold our, our leadership team, our worship team in prayer as we discern the right way to go with worship um, that we can open well and um, uh, enjoy the life in this building and uh, in our church community. And don't forget, for those who have uh, ordered the geraniums, please pick up your geraniums after worship and leave the baskets here so Mark can decorate the next time we, we have geraniums in our, uh, on our altar. So friends, as you go out into this world, go forth in peace. Be of good, good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. And love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs>